Welcome back. I'm Harry Boomer, and with me this morning are Bonnie Etler, Executive Director of the Seeds of Literacy, and Joe Stagelwall, the Organization's Development Director. We were talking about uh, Seeds of Literacy, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we understand is that it is never too late to learn how to read and do some other things that we should know how to do, and maybe even want to do. Uh, and when you have someone who come to you, because this is pretty much an adult program, correct? So people come. What do they say as to why they never learned or why they're wanting to learn to read now? Um, most students drop out for a variety of different reasons. Um, school issues, maybe a lot of violence, wasn't learning correctly, um, hanging around groups that they shouldn't possibly be and just made that decision to drop out um, early in their lives. Uh, you know, it's funny, I have a friend uh, who has a, a networking organization here in town, really around the world. He travels around the world giving motivational speeches and he said that if you hang around people making C's and D's, chances are you're going to make C's and D's. If you hang around people making A's, you've got to make A's and B's. So you need to hang around people who are going to help you make good decisions, and learning to read and not dropping out is one of those good decisions. Uh, talk to me about some of the programs, Jody, you have over the C's of Literacy. Well, our, our main program and the one that the students come to us for is um, basic education and preparation for the GED. Um, as Bonnie mentioned, most of our students dropped out of high school for some reason. Um, a lot of them, when I talked to them, they said, you know, I was really a good student until middle school, and then I got in with the wrong crowd, or somebody got sick in my family, and I had to stay home. So they've decided to come back, and our program is not a mandated one, so people choose to come to us. Um, I think we're unique in a couple of different ways, the first of which is that we do one-to-one -one tutoring, so that somebody at any level of academic achievement can come to us, we test them and assess them to see where they are, and then we match them with a tutor. And they work together with that tutor. So it's not a classroom situation. It's not somebody saying, okay, now we're going to do page five and everybody does the same and you know, some people are slower and some people are faster. But it's really um, each individual has their own goals and the tutor works with them to achieve those goals. So when we talk to our students again and again, that's what they say has made a difference for them. They're surprised by it. One, one young man said to me, you know, I don't, I don't think I'd like it because I'm not used to a classroom and, you know, what is this guy sitting next to me helping me with? But I think it, it reinforces their sense of individuality and that they're making a choice and sort of gives them that dignity and respect that they need. I know that when I did a program, I actually did a report on the seeds of literacy uh, some months ago, and there was a young lady there who said that she came back that she couldn't help her daughter uh, do the homework, and she loved it so much, learned so much in such a short period of time, she now volunteers mm -hmm. there. One of the other things that I, when I was doing the research that I found out is that the number of people you guys have seen uh, larger than some high schools yeah. in the area in terms of the numbers that come through every year. Yeah. Um, we served about 1,200 students last year. Uh, we hit um, a variety of different neighborhoods all throughout Cuyahoga County. Last year we had students come from 48 different zip codes to wow. see. So they definitely travel. Um, they really enjoy the environment that we create for them. And really our strength is our one-to-one -one instruction, working with those tutors and someone really to motivate them and encourage them that they can be successful in life. Now, how do you find the right? Go ahead, Joe. You were going to you know, say something. I, I think another thing that, that I've heard students really comment on about liking our program is that um, we're there Monday through Thursday. We have three different class sessions, morning, afternoon, and evening. And so students can decide how much or how little they're able to come. So for some students who have more time and, and have the motivation, they can come you know, for six hours a day if they want, morning, afternoon, and evening, and stay between the classes to work individually. Sometimes there's somebody that, around them to, to help. Sometimes they just, you know, do their own self-guided stuff. So I really think that um, the convenience aspect and the fact that it's not a, a program that starts and stops, it's year-round. We don't, we, you know, we're off for holidays, but we're not off for the summer. Hmm. And I think that makes a big difference, too. How do you identify the two to work with an individual? Is it like, okay, it's your turn next to tutor somebody, or do you try and match that individual? Uh, their demeanor, their behavior, their habits in terms of being able to teach with somebody. You know, everybody is different, different personalities. How do you match them up? Uh, we actually have a staff person that we are. Everyone has a certified teacher during each of the class sessions, and he or she will match the students and the tutors together based on the strength of the student and the tutor. Um, we do train tutors. They go through about a 12-hour training session before we put them into the classroom. Now, when you look into somebody's eyes, uh, when they walk in that door, they feel like they can't measure up. They may even feel unintelligent, even though we know that's generally not the situation. 
And then when they've been there for a minute or two and they've had some instruction and they and you begin to see the light in their eyes, what is that like for you? It's an incredible feeling. Um, that's what keeps me motivated and always wanting to continue to make seeds as best as we can. Our students are really grateful for the opportunity that they have and how they've changed their lives through education. I think too, I mean, they, they get so excited because they have a whole team of people that are excited for them. Mm -hmm. They have a tutor that's worked with them. They have other students that are helping them out. There's, you know, the receptionist who's very friendly. There's just a, there's a, um, there's a good positive atmosphere. And that sounds so silly, but it, I think it's very important for some of our students. Um, they come from places where there's not a lot of emphasis on education. There hasn't been, or they, they haven't been made to feel that they can do it. And so, you know, when their name is posted up saying that they've, they've progressed to half a grade level or a grade level, they, they're excited. They want to show it off. And the other day I, I heard somebody was telling me that two students were, you know, sort of giving it to a third saying, hey man, you know, you've been on fractions too long. You gotta, you gotta come more often. You gotta do the studying. And I think that support between the, the, the staff and the other students really, really does a lot for, for each student. You know, it sounds like there's a family atmosphere there where people can walk in, feel welcome, and sit down on the table one-on-one -on -one and get what he or she needs uh, in a relatively short amount of time. Now, uh, programs like this uh, cost, even though it does it cost the student, or how do you guys fund what you do? We actually raise all our own money, <laughs> so we're not funded by the federal government. Um, so we have a lot of great relationships with the foundations locally and nationally, as well as our individuals and corporations. But uh, we're always looking for additional support so we can continue to meet this huge need here in Cleveland. And what about volunteers in there as well? We have a huge dedicated staff of volunteers. I think um, what's so different is that our organization depends on about 225 volunteer tutors and they come to us. Um, many of them have heard of us through um, church bulletins. We do a lot of recruiting through uh, church bulletins and then just word of mouth. And they, um, they make it possible for us to have a program. I mean, they, they're doing a direct service. We have a staff that, as Barry said, that is certified and you know, our degree education professionals who oversee the tutors and do the training. But um, the, the bulk of the work is done by volunteers. We also have volunteers that help in the office, behind the scenes, with fundraising, administration. But um, in order to keep our, our program free for our students, because uh, the majority of them live at or below the poverty line, um, it's important for us to raise the money. How important is it to understand how poverty actually impacts on one's access to education? Because that is one of the major factors, I think, oftentimes, when you are coming from a place where you really can't eat sometimes, you know. You got to worry about getting the next meal or a roof over your head or clothes on your back. And then you have to worry about going to school and studying. And then you can go through a whole, as we find, almost a whole lifetime not having had the opportunity to learn to read and do math and other things you need. That puts you at a major deficit, doesn't it, Bonnie? It does. Um, education being a priority for our students is always hard. As you mentioned, we have a variety of other issues to deal with. But we do some real intense retention process with our students. Uh, we call them very often if they haven't been in class and try to really help them set short-term goals for them to help them realize that they can be successful as long as they put the effort into it. Yeah, that's an important thing because as you know in high school people drop out in this city and in many other major cities around the country the dropout rate is phenomenally high and uh, I've said on this program a dozen times at least uh, that if you don't have an education uh, you end up probably uh, going uh, on that road to failure, as I mentioned, or heading to jail, because 75% of the people in jail don't have a high school diploma. That state, federal, and local prisons and jails and that. So it's, there's a correlation between not being able to read or, you know, do those kinds of things and the options you have later on in life when you graduate. It's not like it was 30, 40 years ago when, when muscle and brawn uh, were the way to go. Now you have to exercise your brain. And, and use that. Um, what grade level do you find most people coming in at? I know it's hard to, to quantify all the time. There's got to be some basic level and then talk to me about where they are by the time they leave. Um, most, people, most students come in at about a fourth or fifth grade reading level. We actually have seen a really decrease in students reading levels um, over the last two years. Um, so we actually added some specialized courses to help um, our students in addition to the regular class sessions. We added a reading comprehension program to our, pro our services. Um, hopefully by the time the students leave us, they do have their GEDs that they are reading at over a 12th grade level. 
That's wonderful. Right? That's uh, basically you do some remedial work to get them up to right. speed, so to speak. Right. All right, very good. Well, so we're going to take another break, and we'll come back and then talk more about it. Okay. Well, as we go to this break, I want to invite you to tune in to 19 Action News at noon. I co anchor that show with Catherine Bosley weekdays. Also, please check out my reports during the week, first at 4, 5, and 6. I would also appreciate your hitting me up on Twitter at HarryBoomer19. I tweet every day about the stories I'm going to be covering, plus I send pictures of the story, which are then posted on our website, 19actionnews.com. One more thing, please like my fan page on Facebook. Become a friend on the fan page. I've already reached a five thousand friend limit so please look for the fan page and like that thanks in advance coming up more of a very important life's changing conversation with body etler and joanne stagerwald from the seeds of literacy we'll be right back don't go away <laughs>